Hey, Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into Fiddle of Eagles Now. Today, it's going to be a controversial video. You're not going to like me after today's video, but we have to do this because I want to get into five Eagle players who could take a step back, who could regress in 2021. Now, we obviously hope that all five of these players don't regress. They actually play better. That's the expectation and hope in 2021. But if I had to pick five players who I could see taking a step back, these are the five, and I'll give you reasons for every single one. All right, let's start with Brandon Brooks. And we have to start with Brandon Brooks. And there's one reason why we have to go ahead and start with Brandon Brooks, and that is the fact that he is the really one eagle, the one veteran eagle coming off of a major injury who we really have no idea what Brandon Brooks is going to be like in 2021. We expect him to go ahead and be 100%. He says he's going to be back to 100%, but he's coming off out of another Achilles injury. And right, I know he was Superman out of the first one, but can you really come back from two Achilles injuries and still be at a Pro Bowl elite right guard level? Well, we're going to go ahead and find out here when the season starts. Now, the good news for Phil for uh, Philadelphia is that Nate Erbig and Matt Pryor both filled in for Brandon Brooks last year, and both of them showed some promise. I think both of them could be very easily plugged back into that role if Brooks were to get injured again, heaven forbid, or if he were to, like, struggle mightily, which I'm not expecting him to, but he does have to make this list again because of the injury. Like, can, can Brooks come back again? That's the question. He came back the first time and seemed better than ever. I mean, when he came back from the first Achilles injury, it was like, oh my goodness, this guy is superhuman. He came back faster, stronger, and he looked just like... This is, Brandon Brooks is a beast. Then the, 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 the next injury happened, the one that happened last year, and you go, okay, can he come back from back-to-back -back once? And that's going to be the real question mark uh, for Philadelphia going forward. Now, in terms of, again, the guys behind him, like we mentioned, there are plenty of options right now. Philadelphia Eagles, uh, the, the, sorry, the Eagles' biggest problem last year in terms of injuries was depth. There was no one really behind all these offensive linemen who got injured. And so if Brooks were to go ahead and get hurt again, or like we just mentioned, he needs to be replaced at some point, which is a big if. I mean, I'm not expecting that to happen. But I'm just saying you have Toth, you have Pryor, you have Erbig, all of which have interior guard play time at some point last year and could be plug back in into a starting role. All right, we'll keep going here in one second. First, confidence level in Brooks returning from the injury. How do you feel about Brandon Brooks' chances of getting back to a Pro Bowl level in 2021? Scale 1 to 10, like 1 being like zero confidence, 10 being all the confidence of the world. I'm at like a 7 right now because I believe in Brooks, and I trust that he can get back to 100%. He looks really, really healthy, but again, got to make sure we stay. Uh, he stays on the football field for all 17 games. All right, next person is going to be my biggest and most controversial one on this list. And you're not going to like me for this, and I don't like me for doing this. But again, let's look at the tea leaves and let's talk about actual facts here. Miles Sanders makes my list. Now you say, Thomas, why is Miles Sanders, who is one of the best young running backs in the National Football League, how could he take a step back from where he was last year? Well, I'll give you uh, two really big reasons. One. Injured last year, and injuries have been a problem for Sanders really his entire career in Philadelphia. Only played in 12 games in 2020 and was often on the football field even during those 12 games. And even though that's, you know, reason one, number one, he makes this list, the main reason is the competition and backs behind him. The Eagles signed Kerryon Johnson, who you guys know I'm very, very high on, and they drafted Kenny Gainwell. So if you're not even high on Kerryon Johnson, you're a Boston Scott guy, like a lot of you guys are in the comments section. You still got to acknowledge the fact they drafted Kenny Gainwell while they considered the third best running back in the 2021 NFL draft. And so maybe he stays healthy the entire year, but he's got to share more carries with some of these other explosive backs around him. Therefore, the production dips, and he has a lesser year in 2021. Now, question is, what is a lesser year? Because you look at the numbers from last year, and you would consider this to be a down year for Miles Sanders. Like, he, the expectation is he's going to go ahead and be a 1,000-yard back. If he were to, i say, recreate what he did in 2020, in 2021, 867 yards, less than 170 uh, uh, carries overall, that would be a regressive year, hence why he went, goes ahead and makes this list. I don't know why people are so low on Carryon Johnson. Maybe you're not, but a lot of people in the comments section, in my DMs on Twitter as well, at Real Thomas Mott, by the way, say that Johnson is not going to get a lot of touches this year. I have him as RB2 in my depth chart. I loved him coming out of college. I think he just didn't get utilized with the Detroit Lions. Like a lot of players don't get utilized with the, the Detroit Lions. I'm a big Kenny Gainwell fan as well. And so I sit here and I look at the current Eagles running back depth chart, and I'm saying Carryon Johnson is going to take some of these snaps away from Miles Sanders. Kenny Gainwell is going to take some snaps away from Miles Sanders. Now, I still believe Sanders can be a top five back in this league, and I think he's going to be pretty darn good in 2021. But in terms of having to pick players who could regress, Sanders has to make the list again just from the simple fact of injuries plus the guys behind him who could be taking snaps away at the running back spot. Okay, before we go ahead and keep going, we do know the Eagles, in terms of the offense, I mean, those are the only two players I'm going to pick right now for a regressive season. The guy who's going to have a really, really good season in 2021 is Devontae Smith, and his jersey is still up and available for you guys to go ahead and pick up at chatsports.com forward slash Devontae. That link will be down below me in the description box right now. This is going to be the hottest jersey, and it is the hottest jersey right now in Philadelphia, and so you want to go ahead and grab one before they run out. That way, you can rep it whenever Philadelphia and the Lincoln Financial Field uh, Stadium are at 100% capacity here in 2021. So go down below, chatsports.com forward slash Devontae. 
All right, let's move over here to some of the defensive players. A lot easier from a defensive perspective to fix some regression players because there's a little more depth, and there's also some age, and a lot of age, on the defensive side of the football. I mean, the offensive line besides, I think, Kelsey is probably really very, I mean, overall. Running backs are young, quarterbacks are young, and the wide receivers are young. Defense is a different story. So we'll start with Brandon Graham, who I think a lot of people would expect him to go ahead and be on this list because he's coming off really his best year as an Eagle. He made the Pro Bowl for the very, very first time in 2020. And even though there's no sign of regression, he is 33 years old, and he's not getting any younger, plus the depth behind them continues to go ahead and be an issue, at least for Graham, because the depth is pretty darn good. So, here was Graham last year. This, I mean, these numbers are insane, right? 46 tackles, 8 sacks, 16 quarterback hits. That's a massive, massive number of the quarterback hits. He's so great in the run game. I love Brandon Graham. I'm glad they gave him that one-year extension. He will be the starting defensive end. I don't, again, any of these players predict him to have a regressive year, but you got to go ahead and read the tea leaves and see, can Brandon Graham still be dominant at his age? Like, Brandon Graham isn't getting any younger. He's 33 years old. I mean, you can only play for so long at a high every single down sort of level from a defensive end perspective. Now, there is a reason they went out into free agency and signed Ryan Kerrigan. I mean, the hope there, I think, is that Ryan Kerrigan can be kind of the Robin to Batman, uh, to Brandon Graham's Batman in terms of coming in and filling in for Brandon Graham whenever he does need a spell, being at the age that he is at right now. Will he have a massive, massive, regressive year? Maybe not, but he could see less snaps because of the emergence of Josh Sweat, maybe the emergence of Derek Barnett, who's in the contract year, is going to go ahead and try and get as many sacks as he possibly can in order to get a new contract going into the 2022 NFL season. So we got to put him on here, even though he is a fan favorite, number one in our hearts, Brandon Graham, 33 and a lot of talent around him. The snap number could go ahead and come down a little bit. I'll ask you guys this, who gets more sacks in 2021, Brandon Graham or Josh Sweat, right? I mean, those to me are the two starters on the outside. I'd, Sweat's going to have a good year. You guys know that. Sweat's going to have a really good year. Big fan of Josh Sweat. Give me your thoughts on who has more sacks. Type G down below for Graham. Type S down below for Sweat. All right, let's go ahead and jump into my second to last player here. And this one it needs to not regress. I mean, Darius Slay. Well, just, just just throw it up on the screen. Darius Slay. Slay cannot regress this year. He regressed last year. I mean, he was rated in the 18th best uh, cornerback by Pro Football Focus. He was once considered a top five cornerback in the league by Pro Football Focus. So he did regress technically last year. He cannot regress anymore. And if he does, this Eagle secondary is going to be in a heap of trouble because clearly he's the number one cornerback and he is at the age of 30. And so there you go, the wrong side of that 3-0 number. But as with the other players, we have a lot of great depth behind him, hence why you you would think they would regress, like at the running back spot or at the defensive end spot. There is no room for Slade to regress if he does, because look at this cornerback depth chart. It's brutal. Like there are, the Eagles don't even really have five cornerbacks to throw up on the depth chart. I threw Graylon Arnold in there because the ESPN depth chart has him over at cornerback in like a third string capacity, even though he's played more safety during his career at Baylor and then now in Philadelphia. If Maddox starts on the outside, or if McPherson starts on the outside and Maddox on the inside, that only leaves like Craig James as a backup if someone were to go ahead and get hurt. And so I hope that Darius Slay picks it up from where it was last year. But if he does regress this year, man. That secondary is going to be in trouble, which is why they really should go sign a cornerback, which I've talked about a lot here on the channel. But that's just me. Time, a different story for a different day. All right, final player here. We'll go ahead and get to number five, and that is Fletcher Cox. And uh, listen, it's very similar to the Brandon Graham si situation. The age, the depth behind him, but there's a different link in here, a new factor, and that is the reported beef between Fletcher Cox and the Philadelphia Eagles, because apparently Fletcher Cox wants a new contract, even though he has two years left on his deal. Philadelphia doesn't want to do that. And so there's kind of that little back and forth on Twitter that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. So that could also be a reason and why Cox could regress in terms of the fact that, uh, you know, he might not be happy in Philadelphia, even though that's not reported. It's just kind of been like a little rumor that's swirling out there uh, in the ether. Now, he was good last year. I'm not going to say he was uh, elite last year. He was still pretty darn good. 15 games, six and a half sacks, nine quarterback hits. He has a lot more an off the statute in terms of beating double teams and giving guys one-on-ones and doing what Fletcher Cox does best. But, the addition of a guy like Milton Williams, who was drafted in the third round, you expect him to go ahead and get a lot of overall looks in terms of being the future at defensive tackle. Javon Hargrave in year two in Philadelphia, he had a great uh, final half of the year overall from a defensive end, uh, defensive end per, uh, perspective. I don't think Cox takes a big step back, but he's got to be included on this list here because, again, the age is an issue. The production was a little bit down from last year, and the depth around him is very strong, and they're going to be rotating a lot of guys in there from a defensive line perspective. All right, we'll end on this question. Which Eagle is most likely to take a step back in 2021? Of my list of five, who would you go ahead and pick? If it's not anyone on my list, then give me somebody else that you think is going to go ahead and take a step back down below right now in the comment section. 
All right, ultimate of the day here on Philadelphia Eagles now. Again, don't hate me. I just had to, had to give you a list of the five guys who could. Hopefully they don't, but you never know what happens as we give you our list of the five Eagle defensive and offensive players who could take a step back here. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel for more great videos. Got a news and rumor video upcoming in the next couple of days. Make sure you guys are subscribed for that as well as a mailbag video, uh, which, of course, we answer all of our subscriber mailbag questions. So stay tuned for that as well. Ultimate for today here on Philadelphia Eagles now. I'm your host, Thomas Mott, signing off for the rest of your day.